Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Thursday night with Liberty Baptist Church Online as we um, spend our Thursdays going through God's Word. And I know that we have been looking at the book of Proverbs for uh, several weeks on Thursday nights, but we're going to do something a little bit different uh, this week. With it being uh, the, you know, the week leading up to Easter Sunday and hopefully our focus is on Jesus and on his incredible um, death and, and resurrection, is his sacrifice for us, and then um, rising victoriously from the grave. And we get to celebrate that this Sunday. And I kind of wanted to keep our minds focused on Jesus. And so um, we're actually going to be in John chapter 13, beginning in verse 12, uh, here in just a moment, because uh, John chapter 13 tells the story of the Last Supper, which happened, um, th as far as we know and can tell, the Thursday evening before Jesus' resurrection that Sunday morning. And so um, I thought it would be interesting for us to look at and, and consider what Jesus and his disciples were going through the Thursday before the very first uh, Easter Sunday. And so that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to read verses 12 through 17 of John chapter 13, and then we're also going to drop down and look at verses 34 and 35. So let's see what they say. Starting in verse 12, John tells us that uh, when he, meaning Jesus, had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And then dropping down to verse 34, he says, uh, Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So we pick up um, in the story of the Last Supper and, you know, we pick up at the tail end of Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet. So Jesus, the, the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world, um, you know, God the Son in, you know, in the flesh, their teacher, their, their rabbi, their leader, he has taken the position lowest among them and, and voluntarily offered to wash all of their feet and uh, they you know even some of the disciples are a little bit reluctant to allow him to do this but he insists and he uh, goes around the table and, and washes their feet and after he's done he says to them do you do you get what i've done for you then you know i the the person who you think of as above you i have made myself your servant i have served you by washing your feet and you should do likewise. This should serve as an example of, of what it means to love one another, what it means to serve one another. And then we get the, this new commandment that he gives in verses 34 and 35. And, and sometimes the Thursday before Easter, um, the people call it Maundy Thursday, which um, is not something that a lot of times we celebrate in, uh, in Southern Baptist churches. But um, that comes from a Latin word, which basically means commandment Thursday, because it is commemorating uh, that Jesus gives this new commandment on the Thursday before his resurrection. And the new commandment is this, love one another. As I've loved you, so must you love one another. And so this is this lesson that we're all still trying to learn how to do all of these years later, is, is how do we live our lives loving you know others especially loving other believers like Jesus loves them. And that's a really challenging thing to do, but that's the lesson that he gives them. And he's just lived out the example of how to do that. It is saying, I don't care what my perceived position is, what, you know, where in the hierarchy I seem to fit. I'm going to love people enough to put them above me and to serve them. And so he's given them this very tangible example of how to do that. And he says, that's how people are going to know that you are my disciples if that is the way that you treat other people. That regardless of what the world might assign you as a social value or in, in the social structure of things, that you are going to love people enough 
to put them above you and serve them. And that is a powerful message that then Jesus is going to give them even a greater example than the foot washing of how to do that because he is next going to give up his own life to win the victory, to win our lives for us. And so, you know, we don't just get this first example of washing the feet. We get this much greater example that he's going to die on the cross and he's going to raise from the dead three days later. It is this powerful, powerful thing. Jesus lives out this new commandment perfectly. He loves us perfectly and completely. And whenever we look at Jesus' example, and as we um, focus so much on uh, him and the sacrifice that he made this week, I also don't want us to forget um, that we are called to love people in the same way. Now, I don't know that we're often going to um, give our, our lives for people, but we should be willing to put people above us, to serve them. And it might come to that, that we need to be willing to sacrifice ourselves um, for someone else. It's not going to save them um, in the scale of eternity the way that Jesus' death did, but it is going to be a true picture of our love for them. And that's a really extreme way, but in just in little small ways, it's not hard to, in your day-to-day -day life, find ways to say, you know what, I'm going to put other people first and serve them rather than trying to get out of life what I want. Knowing that Jesus did that, and that's what he says we're supposed to do, I think should be a powerful motivator for us to live that kind of life. So I hope that this has maybe put your focus on Jesus a little bit um, in maybe the distractions of this week. And I hope that it has been a challenge to you to um, live your life loving others and putting them first. Thanks again for uh, joining us. If you have a, a prayer request or something that's on your heart, please share it in the comments below so that we can be praying for you here at Liberty. But let's um, close in prayer and then we'll, we'll say goodbye for the evening. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for this time together looking at your word. Um, we pray that you would help us to be people that show others that we are your disciples by loving others, by, um, by being their servants, by putting them first, by making sacrifices to make them feel loved. Father, we, uh, we thank you for Jesus' example to his disciples and to us of what it means to love others, what it means to serve them. And especially we thank you um, that he died on the cross as the ultimate example of what it means to love. And we thank you for the salvation that his death accomplished for us. We, we love Jesus. We want to spend every day of our lives living for him, following him, and doing things in a way that honor him and show others his love. Um, we thank you that we get the opportunity to do that. And we um, pray that you will just be with us as we celebrate his glorious resurrection this weekend. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining me tonight. Have a great Easter weekend. I hope to see many of you um, Sunday, or I hope you're able to join us online. But whatever you've got going on the next couple days, I, I just pray that God brings you back safely. And I will talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.